All right, so this video is going to be all about the ideal gas law. And basically the ideal gas law is just, um, it's gonna lead us to one equation that uh, involves all of the uh, gas laws, Boyle's law, Charles's law, and Avogadro's law. So remember that uh, Boyle's law says that the uh, volume is inversely proportional to the pressure of a gas. So it's proportional to the inverse of pressure. So uh, V is proportional to one over P. Charles's law says that the volume of a gas is, is directly proportional to the temperature. And Avogadro's law says that the volume of a gas is also directly proportional to the amount of the gas in moles. So basically what the ideal gas law does is just combines all three of these proportionalities into one. So let's see if we can't uh, derive the uh, ideal gas law equation. So combining all these proportionalities uh, into one single proportionality, uh, we'll end up getting that the volume is uh, directly proportional to nt over p. Remember, it's directly proportional to both the amount in moles and the temperature, and it's inversely proportional uh, to the pressure. So the volume is uh, proportional to N, uh, nt over p. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, proportionality, and I'm going to turn this into an equation. So if we do that, we'll get that the volume is equal to a constant of proportionality that I'm going to call r times nt over p. If we multiply both sides of the equation by p, we'll get pv equals nrt. That is uh, the common form of the ideal gas law equation. So the constant r, this is what we call the ideal gas constant. And if we arrange this equation and divide both sides by nt, we'll get that r is equal to PV over nt. Again, this is just uh, dividing both sides of PV equals nRT by, uh, by um, nr, excuse me, by nt to, uh, to get r all by itself. And so depending on the units of pressure, volume, amount, and temperature, depending on those units, uh, the value uh, of the ideal gas constant, R, can have many different units as well. So the most common units of the, uh, of the ideal gas constant are uh, liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. So notice we have a unit of pressure, ATM, we have a unit of volume, liters, we have a unit of the amount, that's moles, and then we have the absolute temperature, which is in uh, kelvins. So uh, let's do a, uh, an example, shall we? All right, so suppose I have a gas, and the pressure of this gas is two atmospheres. And let's say the volume of the gas is 5,000 liters. And suppose I have uh, 100 moles of this gas, so N equals 100 moles. If I have a, uh, a pressure of uh, two atmospheres, a volume of 5,000 liters, and a, an amount of 100 moles, then what is going to be the temperature of this gas according to the ideal gas law? So you can start with the ideal gas law equation, that's PV equals nRT. And then uh, to get T all by itself, we have to divide both uh, sides of this equation by nR, and we'll get that T is equal to PV over nR. And now all we have to do is just plug in the values. So we'll get that T is equal to the pressure, that's two atmospheres, times the volume, that is 5,000 liters, whoops, <laughs> 5,000 liters. Uh, the amount, 100 moles, 
and uh, the value of the gas constant R, that is um, 0 0.08206 uh, liters times atmospheres over moles times kelvins. So this value, 0 0.08206, that is the value of the gas constant if the units of the gas constant are liters times atmospheres over moles times kelvins. So, you know, a lot of people like to think that, yeah, this is the value of the gas constant no matter what. That's not necessarily true. You have to pay attention to uh, what the units are. So, notice if we cancel all of these units out, we will get a unit of temperature. Atmospheres cancels here and here, and then moles cancels here and here, and then um, liters cancel here and here, and we're left with nothing but kelvins. Okay, so if you crunch these numbers into a calculator, you'll get something uh, along, along the lines of uh, T is equal to uh, 1.22 times 10 to the third um, kelvins. So about you know 1,200 kelvins, so that's a pretty hot temperature. So um, that was just an inter uh, introductory video on the uh, ideal gas law. And in the next, in a later video, I'm probably going to uh, discuss what an ideal gas is and go over some of the limitations to the ideal gas law. So good luck.